by the time we get back here, it's been like an hour of this. Look at my tie. Look at this. Just kind of... Number one, that's my tie. Yeah. That's true. Maybe that's why? Maybe it's like your tie just naturally goes <laughs> to the left. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm Steven. And I'm Kevin. In today's episode of The Steven and Kevin Show, we're going to talk about letting go. Welcome back to episode number 81 of the Stephen and Kevin Show. Today we're talking about letting go in order to gain control. Now you might hear that title and you might think, okay, well, they're talking about being less involved in my business. And that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about making sure that you're focused on the right activities within your business. Yeah, we want you to be more involved than ever, really, but letting go of some things that are maybe counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Much of the coaching that we do is around practice management, team leadership, just team functionality in general. And one of the biggest challenges we have with team leaders is their inability to let certain things go over time. Great, great, well said, Stephen. So let's talk about uh, the first thing that we think you should let go of. And this actually came from a Ray uh, Dalio quote. And the quote is this, the quote is, remember that you're looking for the best answer, not simply the best answer that you can come up with yourself. And that's a quote I have written on my wall in my office um, because the first thing we want you to let go of is letting go of the feeling that you always have to be right. Yeah, and I think particularly if you've been in the industry for a little while, you have some preconceptions of what works and what doesn't, what's, uh, you know, what's the right way to go about doing something, what's the wrong way. And as your business evolves, there are times when it makes sense to broaden your thinking a little bit and your team members are great sources of advice. So we can't hang on to the notion that, hey, we've always done it this way. We ought to continue doing it this way if there are in fact better alternatives out there. Yeah, or if you're like you're in a team meeting and everyone's brainstorming and you come up with an idea and then you keep pushing it and you say, no, that's, that's the idea that we're doing, right? And you need to, when you do that, it pushes the rest of the team away, right? And eventually what will happen is they will just stop coming up with ideas because your idea is always the right one anyway. Right. And think about a team. If you've got two people or you've got 20 people, yep. the other team members have just as much, if not more contact with your clientele than you do. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at that, they come up with naturally, if they're empowered to do so, some really good ideas about ways to improve client service or about ways to improve uh, you know, marketing or, or the way that your team operates internally. We've got to have that just be you know, reinforced over and over and over again. We value your ideas. We want your ideas. We will implement them, in fact. Yeah, because and, you hired smart people. That's right. Right. So when you look at, you know, this is sometimes being a control thing. Mm. And, and I found some interesting uh, three signs that you're dealing with a control freak. It's from Psychology Today. I hope that, um, that we aren't represented in, in any of these signs. Maybe one like... of us is. Uh, <laughs> no, it, n neither of us are on this one. But uh, top, top three signs you're dealing with a control freak. And if the shoe fits, wear it. Number one, if you're correcting people when they're wrong, you know, you know the type that will... Well, technically, Kevin, it was 1984 that that took place, not 1985. When it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, technically, right? Kevin, you should be saying whom there instead of who. <laughs> I know a couple people like that, and uh, they're not very likable people. No, uh, number two, always trying to win the argument or have the last word. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to let go of that. Number three, refusal to admit when they're wrong may be a sign that you're a control freak. I know a couple people who have never apologized when they're wrong with something, you know? Yeah, so as we're thinking about this first concept, letting go of always being right, some of it means if you're a control freak, you've got to really work hard at those tendencies and to let other people be right from time to time. Not correct people even when you know they're wrong and you'll be a more likable person because of it. And having that mindset of that Ray Dalio quote that like you are looking for the best possible answer, not just the best one you come up with. So I, I love that. All right, number two. This is a huge one, probably the biggest one and that is letting go of always being in the middle. Always being in the middle of every single project or every team meeting or every, I mean, it's like you have to have your hand touching all aspects of your business. And, and we get it, look, this is your livelihood and this is your, it's really important to you and, and it should be, but it's impossible 
for you to be involved in every decision that is made. Yeah, which usually means over time, you're gonna be giving up some of the tasks that should be done by someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's a harder thing for some people than it is for others. But every time you add a new team member, you're giving away some of your responsibilities and that's an okay thing because you're focusing more on your better clients, on your marketing efforts. Now, let's talk a little bit about why that's a challenge for some people. Why it's a challenge to what, to delegate? Yeah, why yeah. it's a challenge to let go of some tasks that you know you ought to let go with. And we can look at that from two angles. I got this from a NC State project where they looked at why people don't delegate. And they looked at it from, first of all, the angle of you, why you don't delegate. And number two, why other people in your life uh, have barriers to, to taking that delegation from you, mm. right? So uh, barriers from you, they say people say that they don't have enough time to train somebody else on how to do the task. They fear losing control by having someone else be primarily responsible for something. They want the credit. They don't want to lose tasks they enjoy. That's true, yep. They feel they can do it better. That's a big one. Yep. They don't want to delegate themselves out of a job. I think for many of you that's not going to be the case, but it is, you know, in a, feeling, in a more corporate environment, I could totally see that. Sure, or, or feeling like you're delegating away some of the core value that you bring to the organization. Yeah. You know, if yeah. here to four, I've always been responsible for writing articles, and all of a sudden I hand that to someone else, there's this feeling of vulnerability that maybe they don't need me so much around here. Well, what exactly does Stephen do? Yeah, well, well, I'm still figuring that out, right? <laughs> right. So, um, you know, or number seven, not having enough confidence in your team members to do the job. Now, reversing that from their standpoint, very similar. They don't have enough time to do it. They don't have enough experience, they see. Mm -hmm. they, they fear failure. They're not empowered to, to make a few mistakes. Yep. They don't feel like this is their responsibility or they don't want to be the scapegoat. And I think when you look at all these things from both angles, both take good teamwork and communication around it. Mm -hmm. That me as the team leader, I've got to feel comfortable in my own skin that when I give up task, when I get myself out of the middle, that I'm going to find some things that are really productive to do. Yeah. No, that's true, you, you, and, you, and most likely you will, right? And you, if you are, are focused on, on the right things. Um, when you're going back to the delegation aspect of it, when you're talking about the fear of giving up control or, or, or losing credit or that you can do it better, kind of the theme that I hear there is ego, right? Is that sometimes it's just like in ourselves so much, it's a little bit, we're tied up in our own ego that we don't want to to delegate. Well, what does Kevin do with the organization? Well, I do this and that and this right. and all these important right. things. And it's almost like a, you're building your resume there. Yeah. Whereas we're saying, no, we want the enterprise to grow, especially for many of you who are in an ownership or leadership position. It's not your, you know, it, it, this is not a, uh, a contest internally of who does how much. Mm -hmm. It is more of how much can we all do together. Um, on the flip side of it, when you're talking about the person who's being delegated to and sometimes the, the hangups that they have in terms of accepting that delegation, the fear of failure, I think, is a big one. Uh, and, I, and I recall at my first job out of grad school, I remember my boss telling me, and it sticks it with a me. gentleman's club, right? <laughs> it sticks with me to this day, right? Um, and, he, and he said to me, he said, hey, look, I, I want you to screw up. He didn't say screw up, he used a different term. It really got my attention, right? From my first like real job out of grad school. He said, I want you to screw up. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, I want you to make some decisions on your own. And as long as you can come back to me and tell me that you can justify why you made that decision, I'm not gonna get upset with you. And it really helped me just start doing more things, right? And not feeling like I had to always get approval on every little thing, or that I couldn't take something off of his plate that I could easily do. Yeah, I, I love that. And and so, so much of this, when you're looking at it from the employee side of things, when you're delegating to someone else and they may have some of these fears, a lot of it is how you're positioning it. That if I come to you and I'm delegating tasks to you and I come from a position of, you know, I don't want to do any of these anymore. These are menial. These are beneath me. I need mm. them off my plate. It's one thing. It's another when I come to you and say, yeah, I have a passion for you as a person growing. I want you. I want to see you grow. I want to see you pick up some of these things that I've, I've been doing here before that I know you're totally capable of. Mm. And by the way, I know you're going to screw some of this up, and that's okay. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah. You know, play with that net a little bit. It's the only way to grow. And I think when you come from that positioning, you create this culture there that says, hey, not only will time to time I give you tasks that I'd like to delegate, hey, it, it empowers you to say, hey, take things off my plate, come to me. When yeah. you see something that you want to take and, and run with, go for it. Yeah, and again, uh, I remember I get, in grad school, Steve and I went to grad school together, and um, I forget the professor's name, but do you remember the professor who told us once, he said, your job is to make your boss's job easier. 
Do you remember that? I do. Yeah, and I, I, that again is another thing that really stuck with me. Is like whenever you're out in the corporate world, your job is to make your boss's job easier, meaning that you should be taking things off of their plate. Yeah, so, so really a two-way street with it the is. second piece of, of letting go. All right. The third thing we want you to let go of is the status quo, right? There is a tendency, right? Well, let's just back up. When you first started in the business, you tried a lot of things, right? Um, especially when you were trying to grow. Maybe you were cold calling, maybe you were door knocking, maybe you did some seminars, maybe you put up a billboard, maybe, I mean, you just started from a marketing standpoint, you were probably doing a million different things just to, to test the waters and see what would stick, right? What happens over time is once you experience a certain level of success, right, and your, your income starts going up and you know things start smoothing out over time, is that you kind of get stuck there, right? You, you get stagnant and there's, you, you take less risks. And it's the opposite of how it should work because at that point, you have more to risk yeah. without really being risky. Exactly. You've got more skills yeah. and talent. Yep. Like if you think back to in your early days, an investment in a seminar package or in a, an event you're doing for clients or in an, an advertising campaign online would have represented a significant portion of your budget. Yes. Hiring somebody, your first assistant, for example, would have been a huge leap, yep. right? This is scary, this is out of comfort zone. And yet now for many of the people that we see out there, you've reached a certain point of comfort mm -hmm. to where making changes like that just don't happen because they don't te technically have to happen. That's right. There's no desperation for it anymore. But you're at a point where making some major changes to where you're spending money, how you're hiring, how you're running your business could have immense payoffs. That's right. And so what we're saying here in, st in letting go of the status quo, don't be afraid to shake things up a little bit. As you look into the next year and you think about your growth, if you're thinking big enough, you're having to think about changes in your business that are also big enough. Like I need to go on a hiring spree. I need to hire three new people to help me with this. Right. Which might sound totally nuts, but your growth might be in, I need to triple my advertising budget. Or mm -hmm. I need, you know, the, the growth steps for most people uh, get smaller as they get more experience and it should be the exact opposite. Yeah, ask yourself questions like, so what marketing ideas have crossed <laughs> my mind that I have yet to execute, right? Again, you're, you're just not experimenting like you should. For a lot of advisors uh, right now, sometimes it's, it's social media marketing. Um, am I neglecting or embracing new technology? What will my business look like in 10 years? Am I prepared for that? Am I getting ahead of the curve? Uh, again, there's just, there's, there's a tendency to just become stagnant. And what got you here isn't gonna get you there. And you need to keep experimenting and trying new things. Yeah, and it goes back to a lot of the, what we've seen with goal setting over the years. Newer advisors, newer professionals in general set big goals. That's the way they do it, right? Yep. And good for them. They come in and they're fired up and they have big ambitions. And then over time, the goals that we set are either not big enough or they're based on the wrong <laughs> metrics. Like, yeah, or they're very incremental. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go 10% this year. And yeah. that's great. But we also see people set goals around things like total assets uh, or total revenue, all good stuff. You want all, that, all those things going up, but you're also getting credit for things like the market being on a tremendous bull run. That's right. Right, so we've gotta measure things, we've gotta set goals around things that should be motivating and drive the right behavior changes in the business, big behavior changes around personnel and marketing and service. Right. Yeah. I, I love the theme of today's podcast in terms of letting go. Sometimes we, we think so much about just adding and adding and adding and adding things to our plate. And sometimes it's important to let go of things that maybe aren't as, as important. Um, if you want to shake things up, consider our coaching program, right? You'll have someone who is an expert basically planted into your practice and giving you specific advice, talking about specific situations that you're going through and helping your team kind of achieve that next level of success. Yeah, absolutely. Coaching is not all about growth and marketing. Coaching is a lot about how you run the organization, which yeah. has even greater impact than focusing specifically on where do I find my next client. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about things to let go of, Maybe it is number one, letting go of being right. Maybe it's number two, letting go of some task. Or maybe it's number three, letting go of that status quo. But it takes some introspection to get that done. That's right. Thanks, everybody. See how long it takes Walker to produce this one. <laughs> uh.